An ancient Aikido master once stated the following. It is known that when we acquire a skill through training and learning, we pass through the stages of Shu Ha Ri. These stages are explained as follows. In Shu, we execute discipline by repeating the forms our masters and teachers have taught us. We remain faithful to these instructions with no deviation. Next, in the stage of Ha, once we have disciplined ourselves to acquire proficiency in these fundamental disciplines, we start innovating. In this process, the original forms may even be broken and discarded. Finally, in Ri, we transcend from the fundamentals, open the door to creative technique, and arrive in a place of pure mastery. This is where we follow our hearts and minds, unhindered by tradition, while not overstepping the fundamental laws of Shu. This is the Japanese art of mastery that has transformed my kettlebell training without me even being aware of it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you through examples of how it happened. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50K giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. Now what I wanna do with this video is show you how Shuhari transformed my kettlebell journey and I want to inspire you of how you can apply these principles of this video to your kettlebell journey as well. Acquiring a skill takes a lot of time, practice, ups and downs. And as I was reading the Shuhari principle, something resonated with me because I've experienced these same stages in my life as well. And I believe this transcends even kettlebell training. You can also apply this to life in general. The first example that I want to give you is the swing how I started, how we transformed, and how I transcended. The second example that I'm gonna give you is the breathing technique. Again, I'm gonna show you how I learned it, what happened, and how I transcended. My defining moment of shoe was when Steve Cotter visited my gym and certified Angie and me in June 2019. I would even say that there was a stage before shoe when I was just dabbling around with kettlebells, trying stuff out. So after the certification process with Steve, we went to work. We executed this discipline by applying the principles that were taught to us by working, training, and teaching on a daily basis. I even went back and rewatched his material, which enhanced my learning potential. It went through the roof and I had a lot of aha moments. So my swing journey started with the following. Before Shu, my technique resembled something like this. Watch. I even have an old video where you can see my hip extension is working, yes, but the kettlebell is not traveling very far. So when we met Steve, he taught us the hand-to-hand -hand swing. So this was my shoe moment. So as I was trying to understand this concept of relaxation and contraction of the muscles. My technique got a little softer, but the hip extension still wasn't quite there where it's supposed to be. So then I was practicing and practicing and I was entering the ha stage. So I was following my master's footsteps because Steve was the original hybrid that I like to refer to him to. He was mixing good boy techniques with heart style techniques. When it comes to the swing, Everybody was just known the Russian swing or the heart style swing that was something like this. And Steve's hand to hand swing was switching up my idea or my understanding of a kettlebell swing in general. However, when you look at the kettlebell sport guys, they don't really swing. Yes, they use the Russian pendulum technique, but they only do snatch, long cycle, and jerk. So I understood that yes, I have to fully extend my hips but I can let my upper body loose as Steve was teaching me. I also started implementing this foot kick technique that I saw the Gitterboy guys do. And you've probably seen this, how they lift their heels off the floor as they are snatching the weights, for example. So then my hands and swing transcended into this. So this was my personal Shu Ha Ri moment. And now that I'm developing and mastering my own Ri, so to speak, with this hand-to-hand -hand swing variant, 
I also see other people adapting it. And when you see a larger crowd adapting this kind of idea, you know that you're onto something. The second technique that I wanna talk about is the breathing technique. I'm gonna demonstrate it with an exercise and I'm gonna explain how I went through these different stages and how I ended up with our own RE technique that I call herb breathing. Since I've been working out for a longer time now, I always understood that I have to forcefully exhale or just exhale as I'm contracting the muscles or as I am finishing the lift. So my shoe moment was when I was learning new breathing techniques from Steve and also from the heart style guys. Now with Steve, he taught me that you just want to breathe like this. Now with the heart style guys, they breathe like this. So Pavel calls it breathing behind the shield, which also works well, especially if you use heavier weights. It's kind of like a Valsalva maneuver technique. Yet if you're working in the strength endurance realm, you understand that this type of breathing doesn't really work. So my ha moment was using Steve's technique, using the Valsalva maneuver, and using the power breathing method in different types of exercises or depending on what my intent was. Now my re moment is now that I've developed our own type of breathing technique that works well for kettlebell training. And I've seen other use it as well and they maybe call it differently, but I just did a little, little bit of research and that's why I came up with this name. So we call it HRB or in short, HERB. Now H stands for hyper. Now I got this word from hyperpnea because that's the scientific expression for forceful exhaling that sounds like this. R stands for rhythmic. Every exercise has its rhythm and your breathing pattern has to adapt to this rhythm. With a clean and press, for example, it sounds like this. And the last letter B stands for breathing. Breathing encapsulates two things, the exhale and the inhale. And yes, we inhale through the nose because this filters the air and dilates the blood vessels. That's exactly what we need when we train because we need more blood and more nutrients rushing through the system. It also encaptures the Valsalva maneuver to a certain extent because breathing in also means that you wanna tense your abdominals to a certain extent, which takes some ideas from the power breathing method from Pavel Tatsulin. So you see, it's a mix of many things and that's my personal re-moment with the herb breathing method. So watch what it sounds and looks like. I hope I was able to explain how Shuhari transformed my kettlebell journey and how you can use it in your life as well. The first thing that you wanna do is realize your shoe moment. You need a trainer, a coach, a sensei to help you get started with the techniques. Execute discipline and work according to what was taught to you. Your ha moment defines how you are executing the movement and you're finding new ideas and you maybe even discard certain ideas that have been taught to you before. Not because they're bad, but because they don't fit your program or your idea of training. And finally, we have the re moment where you transcend and now you develop new techniques, new ideas, while still respecting the laws and the fundamentals that have been taught to you. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then go watch this video. We're all about kettlebells. And if you're interested in kettlebell training, you're just getting started and you're looking for a online shoe moment, that's the video for you. It's a basic tutorial with a basic workout that's gonna help you to get started immediately. So go watch it right now.